السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear little children and youth I welcome you back to our uh, the set of intelligent questions or remarks or concerns that we have with the young minds This series we have spoken about many things and today inshallah we are going to talk about a very important topic But before that tonight is the night of the 9th of Shawwal 1444 years after the Hijrah or the migration of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu which coincides with April 29, 2023. <clears throat> Shawwal is the month of Hajj. We have the three months of Hajj, Shawwal, Dhul Qa'dah and Dhul Hijjah. We just finished Ramadan. The first of Shawwal was Eid al-Fitr and we are now witnessing first month of the blessed months of the three months of Hajj. We are our Hujjaj. They're getting ready to go for the great pilgrimage that's going to happen on starting on the 8th of Dhul Hijjah, inshallah ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for all of the people who are getting ready for Hajj, make them go and perform their Hajj according to the Sunnah of the Prophet sallam, and inshallah they'll come back with all of their sins forgiven. And at the same time, we should try to take advantage of this blessed time. One of the blessed uh, matters of Shawwal is that we should try to fast the six optional fasting which is if we combine with the fasting of Ramadan it will be like fasting the whole year so you should try to start earlier so you should don't run out of time at the end of the month the only thing that you have to keep in mind is the Saturdays it is not allowed for us to fast the optional fasting other than that any of the days we can do today today's concern or question or concern is a topic that is being taught or a statement that is being taught in many of the uh, history classes to the children in the uh, elementary or you know in the middle school and high school this concept is being taught when people are our teachers are teaching in the public school uh, uh, you know the comparative religion or you know comparing the religions world religions the similarity and the difference and so on and so forth and this is a statement almost taught as a universal truth. What is it? They said that Moses is the founder of Judaism, Jesus is the founder of Christianity, and Muhammad, may Allah have peace and blessings upon all of them, is the founder of Islam. This statement is taught as a universal truth. And since we live in the country of the Ahli Kitab, the people of the book, mainly in America we have the Christians it's a Christian country uh, many of our children if you ask them who do you think Moses was they say he was a Jew if you ask them who was Jesus they will say he was a Christian and of course Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu they say his religion was Islam he was a Muslim and the reason for these answers is because this is what being taught in their in their school and they take it for granted because they associate Musa or Moses with the Jews. They associate Jesus or Isa alayhi salam with the Christians. And of course our Prophet sallallahu is connected to the deen of Allah Islam. But is this a statement first of all or this understanding of our children correct? Of course not. This understanding is absolutely false. Why? Because the statement is completely false. That statement that Jesus is the founder of Judaism, sorry, Moses is the founder of Judaism, Jesus the founder of Christianity and Muhammad the founder of Islam, all of this statement is absolutely false. This is because Musa or Moses, Isa or Jesus and Muhammad, none of them were the founder of any religion. They were not the founder of any concept. They were the messengers of Allah. So how is the messenger of Allah chosen? Do the people gather around them and say, Oh, he's good, he's trustworthy, so he's our messenger? It's not like that. Allah 
the creator of the heavens and the earth, he knows who he will choose as a prophet and messenger. He is the one who chooses them <coughs> and then sends them the message. So for example, Prophet Musa alayhi salam, Allah chose him for himself as Allah mentions in the Quran. And Allah sent him a set of guidance, Torah. And Allah taught him the Torah, revealed to him the Torah and commanded him to preach the monotheism or the oneness of Allah and to tell the people don't worship anything except Allah and to follow him as a prophet or a messenger. Then Prophet Isa, same story. He was not a founder of Christianity. He was not founder of any concept. He was the messenger of Allah. Okay, And his glad tidings was given to his mother even before he was in the womb of his mother. The angel came and told him that this is glad tidings. Your son gonna be so and so and so and so. He will do such and such and such and such. So Allah chose them. And Prophet Isa alayhi salam, Allah gave him the book in Jeel and also Allah taught him the older book, the Torah. So he was taught Torah and Injil. And he was commanded to teach this to his people. Similarly, Prophet Muhammad sallam, you know his story. He was born in Makkah and he was in the Ghari Hira, in the cave of Hira. And Jibril came and basically brought him the Quran and gave him the message that he's the next messenger. This is how they were chosen. So they didn't choose this for themselves. The people didn't choose this for themselves. They didn't sit and think that, you know what, the people are all bad, they're drinking and they're doing have also bad stuff. Let me come up with some guidelines and teach them a religion. Never happened. Everything that they taught is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this, what they teach, is not correct. Those people who are teaching, maybe they are they do not have the right information or maybe they are purposefully trying to twist the history or the facts. Whatever the case is, the statement is absolutely false. And let me read to you a, an ayat and there are so many ayat and hadith about this. But Surah Al-Ahqaf, one of the surah, in verse number 9 Allah Ta'ala says to the Prophet Sallallahu our Prophet, Allah says, قُلْ مَا كُنْتُ بِدْعَمْ مِنَ الرُّسُلِ Say, O Muhammad, Allah is commanding the Prophet ﷺ to tell the people, I am not a new thing among the messengers. Meaning, I am not the first messenger. Meaning, there were messengers who came before me. Bid'a, remember, it's like a bid'a, the term bid'a means what? Something new. Kul ma kuntu bid'a min ar rusul. I am not the, ori the first messenger. There were people who came before me who were prophets and messengers too. Wa ma adri ma yaf'alu bi wala bikum. And I do not know what will what Allah, what will be done with me or with you? Meaning, what will Allah do with me and you? I don't know. Which means what? The Prophet doesn't know the future. Unless Allah gives him some information about the future. In attabi'u illa ma yuha ilayya. Okay, I am supposed to only follow what has been revealed to me. See? So he was not the founder of anything. So the Quran is not his words. The Sunnah is not his state in is not his his teaching sunnah is from allah the quran the words and the meaning from allah the sunnah is his words but the meaning is from allah so when the prophet showed how to pray or mentioned certain things to the sahaba like this is halal this is haram you should do this you should not do that all of this is his statement this is the sunnah but it is from allah and he was the first one to obey that he was the first one to follow that this is exactly what he is saying. I, I don't have any authority on the religion. I am supposed to follow what has been revealed. Who is saying this? Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I am nothing but a plain warner. I have to warn you of the punishment of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And the opposite side of that or the, the flip side of that is there is glad tidings for those who will take this warning seriously. So see this verse is saying that he is not the first messenger, he is not a founder, he is a follower of what? The message of Allah, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Islam did not start with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Islam was always there because this is the only religion that Allah accepts. Allah says in the Quran, inna dina inna Allah islam. The religion, the 
acceptable religion. The only accepted religion to Allah is Islam. So, Islam was always there. Prophet Adam was a Muslim, his religion was Islam. Prophet Nuh was a Muslim, his religion was Islam. Ibrahim was a Muslim, his religion was Islam. Musa was a Muslim, his religion was Islam. Isa was a Muslim, his religion was Islam. Muhammad Sallallahu of course, is the last messenger and prophet of Allah, like any of the, the ones who came before him, but he's the seal and the last one. And he is a Muslim, like the prophets and messengers before him, and his religion is Islam. So it is not allowed, not correct to say, Jesus is Christian. I, when I ask this question to many of the kids, they say Jesus is a Christian. So I ask them, so if he is a Christian, which means he is a non-Muslim, right? So they say yes. So I said, how can he be a non-Muslim? Because he is a messenger of Allah. Then they say, no, 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 he is a Muslim. I said, there you go. So now you know that what you have been taught or this misunderstanding come, comes from those teaching that goes on in the public school. So you know, we do not worry about what they teach because this is their job. Whatever they want to do, let them do. But our job is to have a clear understanding about our prophets and messengers and the religion based upon the true teaching in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. So here is other question is asked. So if all of the prophets and messengers are Muslims and the religion is Islam, understood, then is there any difference? There is no difference. All the religion is same. However, for each time, for each messenger, Allah sent a certain set of rules. These rules could differ. Like, we have a set of rules for us. Why we have a set of rules for us? Because we are sent as a follower of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So we have a set of rules, which is this set of rules is called in Arabic term Sharia, the rules of Allah, the rules of the religion, the laws. Who decides these laws? From A to Z, everything from Allah. Nothing from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Nothing from Angel Jibreel. Everything is from Allah. But then how come the set of rules that we have, because we are Muslims and our religion is Islam, is different than the set of rules, some of the rules are we are saying different than the set of rules that were sent to Prophet, let's say, Isa or Musa or Ibrahim. And this is because Allah is the legislator. He decides which time, which people should follow which set of law. So, if me, I was born in the time of Prophet Isa. So at the time of Prophet Isa, there is no Muhammad Sallallahu Prophet Isa, he is my prophet now, he is my messenger. There is no Quran, there is no Sunnah. So what am I supposed to follow? The Torah and the Injil and the teaching of Prophet Isa and he is the messenger of Allah. That I am supposed to follow him. But now I am not, why don't I follow his book? Let's say that the Torah and the Injil is intact like the Quran, which is not there intact like the way our book is. Okay, the Quran is, but it is not there. We cannot tell which one part of the Torah and the Injil is correct, which is being changed because they manipulated. The corrupted people, they manipulated these books. So let's say that the Torah and Injil was there to the intact. Can we follow the Torah and the Injil? We cannot. Why we cannot? Because those were the books for Prophet Isa and Musa and the people in their time. Yes, they are the books of Allah. But Allah is the one who decided now, this is the new set of law that you have to follow. This is not the decision of Prophet Muhammad This is the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also you have heard, I'm sure, that at the, before the end of the time, one of the signs of the hour is Prophet Isa will come down. Jesus will come down. So when he will come down, he will not, although he knows the Torah and the Injil, but he will not follow Torah and Injil. He will follow the Quran and the Sunnah or the Sharia of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yes, he is a messenger of Allah. Yes, he is one of the great prophets of Allah. But he will come back as a follower, as part of the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. I hope that this concept is now clear, and you should have no problem to understand this. And I will finish with one of the verse. And as I mentioned to you, there are so many verses, but one of the verse in Surah An Nisa, the fourth chapter of the Quran, verse number one sixty-three. Allah Taala says. Inna awhayna ilayka kama awhayna ila nuhi wa nabiyyina min ba'dihi. Indeed, we have revealed to you, O Muhammad. Revealed to you what? The revelation, the Quran and the Sunnah. 
like the way we revealed to Nuh. Okay? And those of the mass prophets who came after Nuh. Which means what? All the prophets and all the messengers of Allah revealed instructions. They didn't start the instructions from their mind. Uh, they didn't use their intellect to decide a set of law. If they did that, that's when we call them a founder. Like, for example, Buddhism has a founder. That's Gautam Buddha. If this is what is true, what they say, Gautam Buddha, that prince, whoever, whatever, and he's the one who get out of the palace and he started thinking and he started coming up with all sorts of laws and this and that. If this is what has really happened, Gautam Buddha is the founder of Buddhism. And there are so many founders of so many so-called man-made religion. The false religions has a founder. But the true religion has no founder, as you can see here. Then Allah Ta'ala says, Wa awhayna ila Ibrahim. And then we reveal to Ibrahim, Wa Ismail, Ismail is the son of Ibrahim, Wa Ishaq, Ishaq is the son of Ibrahim, Wa Yaqub, Yaqub is the grandson of Prophet Ibrahim, Wa Asbat, and Asbat is a group of, uh, there's a dispute about who are the really the Asbat are, but here we can see that the Asbat are righteous, most likely they were prophets, and they also received the revelation. Wa Isa, Isa received revelation. Wa Ayub, Ayub, Job. In English, the word, the name Job, he also received revelation. Wa Yunus, Yunus received revelation. Wa Harun, Aaron, the brother of Musa, he received revelation. Wa Sulaiman, Solomon, he received revelation. Wa Ataina Dawood, Zabura. And we have given Dawood the book Zabur, which is the Psalm. This ayat is a clear refutation and also the other ayat is a clear refutation and indicates the falsehood of the statement Musa was the founder of Judaism, Jesus was the founder of Christianity, Muhammad Sallallahu was the founder of Islam, this statement is absolutely false. Muhammad Sallallahu before him Isa and before him Musa Sallallahu they were all the great prophets and messengers. Allah chose them, Allah appointed them to be the messenger in their time and commanded them to convey the message of monotheism, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and not to associate any partners with them. So we are all connected from the time of Adam alayhi salam to us we are all one ummah, one nation and our Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.